Hey, this is for Hardship Beauty Day 25. I have your routine number five for you. As before, we are doing a 10 minute uh, mini glute workout. We have two minutes of a warm up in the beginning and two minutes of a stretch in the end. So your work portion is a six minute rounds consisting of 15 seconds break, 45 seconds work, adjust that for your pleasure, as well as increasing uh, the six minute increments of additional rounds. Now I use a gym boss timer for all of my intervals. There are plenty of apps out there for uh, to create an interval timer setup yourself. All right, so the only uh, optional equipment today are weights. If you wanna go grab your weights, I'm calling this the standing workout. Now, uh, just a heads up, <laughs> the the first uh, drill, which is the warm up, is called the NSFW, and do not look that up, okay? But it stands for not safe for work. So we're going to do basically a frogger position here. But the important thing is we want to go ahead and use the wall to position our feet flat against it to keep that um, a foot splayed out as well. And the most important thing we want to do here as we take our bum back and forth as part of a warm up is to keep our lower back flat and neutral. So don't come down so far that you create an arch through the back, okay? And you just wanna get in this frogger position in order to uh, stretch out, mobilize your hips, your inner thighs, and keep that core on, okay? So the wider you go down, of course, the bigger the stretch. Okay, so in case you can't see that, it looks like this, okay? So you are rocking back and forth, okay? While keeping the spine neutral, okay? But having your feet flat against the wall will help that. So press back into it in order to engage the warm up and Mobilize your hips. So you're just gliding back and forth in a straight line. And if you sink lower into it, your whole line should lower, not just your bum or your lower back. All right. So, first standing exercise is the uh, sumo squat. So this one is great for getting an area of the glutes that traditional squats won't do. So you do want toes about 45 degree out, your legs fairly wide, and once you're there, you just wanna go straight down, okay? So your knees will track, continue to track over your toes. Okay. And what we're looking for here is to come straight up and as you do to really squeeze through those glutes. Okay. So when we're not doing a single leg exercise, we just repeat a second minute. Okay. And of course, the lower you come down, the more you're going to engage. So really focus on that glute contraction at the top, okay? So as I said before, you don't have to use the whole 15 seconds for a break or a transition if you don't need it, okay? So this is now starting our second 45 second um, round. And of course, if you're holding weights, okay? You can be holding it here in the back, down the front, okay, at your shoulders, whatever works. Just make sure you keep those knees tracking towards your big toe and middle toe, okay? And if you want to make it harder, also you could pulse, but definitely get that squeeze at that top. 
Okay, that was two minutes. The second exercise is the standing floor kicks. So this is one that I just love to do. This is the one where it was optional if you wanted to have something to place your hands on to elevate a little bit in case you find it difficult to go touch down to the floor. But we wanna have one leg standing slight bend to the knee and basically extend this back leg through the heel. Okay, so you get a full contraction here. Bring it in towards your shoulder and extend. So this is a flexed foot. The toes are out to the side, okay? Instead of towards the ground on this one. So we are opening up at the hips. Because it's a side kick that we're taking to the floor, okay? Other side. Um, again, you could elevate your hands if you need to. You could be on your finger pads if you need to. So really try to extend through that heel, meaning the heel should be the furthest out of your feet. So flex the feet. Drive that knee back to your shoulders. Really extend, okay? That means you're also going to take your hips back slightly, a slight shift, because you're trying to reach that heel as far as you can without losing your standing form. Keep your tummy in. Holy cow, that burns if you really contract. Okay. Um, Last one is the single leg Romanian deadlift. Again, we're doing one side at a time. Now, you want to worry more about the balance of your standing leg. If that's an issue, it is for me on my left leg. By trying to get a flat foot, okay, your tripod foot, foot as you bring that leg up behind you and touch down. When you come up, Try not to let this leg uh, touch the floor and whoosh, squeeze with the hip extension at the top. When you go down, basically slide your hands straight down close to your body, okay? And then if you can, have this back leg extended, toes to the floor so that your hips are square. Holy cow, that was just two reps in that 45 seconds. All right, so we'll try the right side. My right side, I'm a little bit more stable. So remember the deadlift, we are hinging back and sliding that hand straight down. Of course, if you have weights, okay, that will really kick it up. And you want to have that back toe towards the floor, reverse the movement, squeeze at the top. Just basically slide your hands down. And then of course, if you're using weights, okay, and if you don't have to talk, don't. <laughs> so fix your gaze, okay, uh, forward on the floor. All right, just have your gaze fixed. Don't let your eyes start. That's always going to help with the balance, okay? This is a hinge movement, so make sure your hips are going back. All right, that was uh, your three exercises. Now, this is one of my favorite stretches. Even though this is not intensely a glute or hip focused stretch, this is always good to have as an option whenever you need a break in between anything you're doing. It's the rag doll, okay? So you're just going to let your knees bend as much as you need to as you calm down, push the hips back, Hug yourself with the arms, let your entire head drop down. Okay, so you have no tension in the neck whatsoever. And your knees will bend as much as they need to. And you're trying to press your lower back 
into the hip flexor, okay? That's the goal versus just trying to come down to the floor or put your hands on the floor or do some, you know, rounding of the back, okay? So um, bend your knees as much as you need to and think about closing the gap between your lower belly and your hip flexor area first, okay? That means go ahead and hip hinge, hug your arms, Okay, so if you end up using your thighs as sort of a, almost a table for your upper body, that's fine. If you have it available to you, you would open up, um, you would lock out the legs more, okay? But don't force it. This is complete relaxation of your head. If you want to kind of twist around and find some good stretch spots in the back that will work all right so always good to go upside down one way or another and that's a very safe and accessible way to do it um and it just feels staying good all right i'll see you in the next post for the last couple of routines for you to take with you see you then